based on uh, many years experience with him, anything Michael Wolf writes has to be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, he once uh, quoted the late Roger Ailes saying something about me that perturbed me. When I went back to Ailes, Ailes said he had never said anything of the kind. And Wolf had no recording to disprove it. Uh, I prefer to believe my friend of 30 years, uh, Roger Ailes. So uh, also, I think some context is important here, Alex. When you are in a presidential campaign, and I've been in 10, when you're in the bunker, when you are seeking grenades to throw over the wall at the enemy, and you are approached by someone you know, who claims authoritatively that they have information that would be of value to you, you take the meeting. The meeting is not illegal. The meeting is not improper. The legal, the meeting could be politically embarrassing if, if it turns out to be a setup. In this case, the fact that the Russian woman lawyer who reached out to Don Jr. through a British PR man who Don Jr. knew and who had worked with it with, uh, turns out to be a nothing burger. She has nothing making it clear that it was just the meeting itself she was trying to achieve, so it could then be spun into something it is not. So they have some microscopic connection somehow to Russians when Hillary's up to her eyeballs. Well, that's all known and documented. So this is just the media trying to then desperately reboot the whole Russiagate fable, fairy tale, and at the same time cause a Republican civil war? I, I think in essence, you're pretty close. Look, I like Steve Bannon. I, I am an ally of Steve Bannon. We don't see eye to eye on everything. We have our disagreements, particularly his tendency to wear three button down shirts on top of each other. But it's a free country and he's free to dress like a vagabond if he wishes to. Uh, he and I have a running joke about this, and none of it is meant in rancor. Sure, but in he's your meeting with him, I don't know how much you want to get into here on air. But I mean, uh, there is signs of paranoia uh, that Drudge points out that's well known. And I'm not putting Bannon down, but he's not God. Uh, and at the same time, you know, there, uh, I mean, I mean, he, he, he is angry at some folks in the administration. So then well, I look well, at that and I wonder, is some of what Wolf, uh, this, I think, known quantity of a fiction writer, did, did Wolf decide to actually get into real journalism and not, not just engage in fiction? Or maybe... Part of his story is correct and the rest of it is false. That's entirely possible as well. Look, uh, Steve Bannon's animus for uh, the president's son-in-law is well known. Uh, the president's son-in-law was the helmsman who inserted so many of these uh, establishment quizlings around the president. H.R. McMaster comes to mind. Uh, I have tried to mute my criticism of the president's son-in-law because, frankly, I'd rather be shooting at liberal Democrats uh, and outside the tent establishment Republicans than shooting at our own, e even when I have my own disagreements. Um, this is something we talked about last night on The War Room. If you are Secretary of State Tillerson, if you are UN Ambassador Haley, and you disagree with the president in the case of Tillerson about Charlottesville. You do it the privately. Case, then you are supposed to keep it to yourself or verbalize your objections to the president directly in a private conversation. That's your prerogative. Uh, but going public uh, and, and you know urinating on the person who appointed you to high public office, the person who gave you the privilege to serve your country at the highest levels, that's treasonous. That's a, a lack of protocol, a lack of manners, and entirely inappropriate, in my opinion. You're right, my friend. Stay there. I don't want to stay on this Stephen Bannon Republican Civil War thing that uh, this reporter, if you can call him that, Michael Wolf has put out. But we've now see unlikely sources coming to the president's uh, aid, coming to Bannon's aid, coming to the truth's aid. Let's put it on screen. We have the New York Times. Maggie Haberman, that's a big reporter there, big Democrat, says Barack said he spoke to Wolf once, says he never said the quote attributed to him to Wolf or anyone, totally false, Barack said by phone just now. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's what she's saying today.
So that's the stuff in this book people are saying, including the former president. I didn't say this. And again, I don't want to just jump on Bannon. I, I, I was careful today, but I am critical of just, I think, what Drudge is saying, some of the paranoia. So let's put bookends on this. When you went to meet with him, it's not a secret that they wanted you to go through a pat down, Roger. That's that's You have no history of being violent. You've been around all these presidents. And I just think that is indicative of some something going on. What do you think? Also, Alex, I think we need to be somewhat realistic. I get three to four death threats a day. I know you get dozens of them. I now have to travel with uh, security. I can't just go to the mall or go to an airport or go to a restaurant anymore. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's gratifying also. It's a 50-50 thing. Some people come up and tell me how much they love InfoWars, how much they love you, how much they love the war room, how much we've done for America. They want a selfie, they want an autograph. It, you know, it's heartening. The other half want to call you names, want to threaten to kill you, want to accuse you of being a no, traitor. No, I understand you don't want to sit here and get in a fight with Bannon, and neither do I. So, so it's possible that Bannon has had death threats, and that might warrant some additional security around him. Let's give him that. Steve Bannon is not a dumb guy. He's a smart guy. Uh, frankly, I'm doubting uh, this quote attributed, uh, uh, attributed to him. Uh, sure, in the context of a campaign, you could have done this meeting early, differently. You could have done it outside Trump Tower. You could have done it um, with a dozen lawyers present. But none of it changes the fact that there's nothing improper or illegal about the meeting, that the woman lawyer produced nothing, zero, and nothing came out of it. Now, some libtard lawyers have tried to say, oh, it's a campaign finance violation. No, it isn't. File that one. Good luck on that. Uh, so this sure, is no need, to, no need to defend the whole Russia thing. And I want to bring in Dr. Corsi here if you'd ride shotgun the next couple segments uh, before Gerald Salente joins us. But what does this do to Russiagate wheels coming off? Judicial Watch saying Hillary's committed crimes. So have these FBI people. I mean, that whole chorus is this a desperate reboot that I think is mainly made up against Bannon to his credit. Uh, where is this going, A, and then B? has I've been looking. Has Bannon responded to this book and this quote? Barack Obama is saying that, that, that the guy's misquoting him. So I think right there we just say this is pure bull. I think it all rides on what Bannon says about the quotes, Roger. Uh, I think you just put your finger on it, Alex. The, the air is out of the Russian collusion balloon. The Democrats have to be embarrassed because they've spent millions uh, they have huffed and they've puffed and they've turned up nothing. This is a naked attempt to reinsert Russian collusion back into the national narrative. Oh, even Steve Bannon says the one meeting they've identified that's interesting is treasonous. A, we don't know that he really said that. And B, Mr. Bannon's not an attorney. And if he did say it, I disagree with his interpretation uh, of the meeting. It's a nothing burger. No, no, I understand that. And by the way, I've got to correct myself here because the lights are bright. And they're putting all these tweets up. She had one about Obama and then it flipped back. It was um, it Tom was, Barrick. Uh, Barrick. Barrick. Because they had another one about Obama, uh, uh, the billionaire Barrick saying he didn't say those things. The point is they're talking to people that are quoted in this book and they're saying that it's not true. So, I mean, I think right there then we just need to hear from Bannon, don't we? Well, here you have Tom Barrick, one of the president's closest personal friends, denies the quotes attributed to him, reported by Maggie Haberman, for my money, one of the best and most honest reporters out there working at the New York Times, solid evidence uh, uh, of pattern that Wolf constantly attributes things to people they didn't say. I'm trying to find my letter from Roger Ailes because I went through one of these on my own with Mr. Wolf. You can find Michael Wolf's books in the fiction section at Barnes & Noble.